everybody. Welcome back to our Gamma uh, Trade Show 2015 coverage. And we are sitting here with Ryan Skinner from Cryptozoic. And we are looking at a, a pile of goodness here. Ryan, what can you tell us about all this good stuff? A lot of good new stuff. So yes. Super excited about this year. We've got some really neat things lined up. Mm -hmm. um, one of the big things we just announced uh, a little while ago, and we just started talking more about it here at the show, is we are doing North American distribution of Spyfall. This, unfortunately, as you can see, is the original Russian box. But trust me, we'll you know have an English box and everything done up when it releases. But uh, the gameplay is going to be identical to what came out uh, in Europe and everyone's been loving so far. Um, location cards, spy cards, there's going to be some new locations. There'll be 30 total in the box versus the 26 the original game came with. Mm -hmm. um, and there's going to be some different ones that are going to be unique just to the North American release. So okay. we're excited about that. Uh, but no changes to the gameplay, no uh, no retheming or anything like that. So everyone can be, uh, be really excited to get a chance to get their hands on this. It's, uh, for those that haven't heard it, I guess maybe we should talk about what the game is. Uh, yeah, we can you know, do a I brief Dice overview. Tower, Dice Tower's been excited about it already. Yes, but, absolutely. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a social party game where you have hidden roles where everyone uh, gets a card and one person in the group is a spy. Uh, the spy is trying to identify the location that the rest of the group is uh, holding in their hand while the other players are trying to identify who the spy is by asking some maybe leading questions but not being too overt with it and so forth. So really neat little social deduction game. It's a lot of fun. So yeah. So you guys are adding some new cards. Mm -hmm. You're keeping all the same artwork, I imagine? Um, oh. Yes, there's some original artwork as well. Um, and then You're some, adding uh, some new artwork, yeah, of course. New artwork the, with all the new locations right. and, then, uh, and then all the original artwork. And everything else is basically the same. Mm -hmm. Same cover, it. just English, Yep. same thing. Yep. Okay, what yeah. uh, kind of release date are you looking at for this? Uh, we're looking here at Q2. It's in production for us already right now, okay. so we're looking uh, here within the next couple months, hopefully. And, uh, is, uh, okay. Story. Yeah, I think May or June, I think, is what our plan is right now. So, excellent, excellent. Yeah. And uh, what about MSRP? What are, what are we looking at? What's the MSRP? Uh, this guy's going to be 30 if I remember correctly. Okay. And, uh, sorry, I should have boned up a little bit. Uh, that's but, fine, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, I believe 30 about 30 yeah, look at thirty dollars. So okay, yeah. cool, very, very nice. Yeah, that, we can so. we can put this guy over <laughs> yep. here. He he might come home with me. <laughs> awesome. All right. Next up, uh, another thing we just announced very recently is the long-awaited sequel to the Epic Spell Wars: The Battle Wizards Duel at Mount Skull's Fire. I'm glad you're uh, the one saying this. Right. Sure. Because I uh, no. Yeah. The sequel here is the Epic Spell Wars Rumble at Castle Tentakill. Um, <laughs> it's a standalone game, also a thirty-dollar SRP, um, but not only is it a standalone, it also will act as an expansion for the original Duel of Mount Skulls Fire game, so you can mash all the cards together. Um, a lot of the cards in this are going to have its own unique new mechanics. Um, the little standee that was in the original of Mountain Skull Fire, um, there's a similar one for Castle Tentakill, except it actually has function now in the game. You're trying to vie over control of the castle while you're casting your crazy spells and using ridiculous voices and all that. So, okay, cool. Yeah, the original, of course, was just on tabletop recently, and we are super thrilled about that. It did really well for us, uh, and everyone's been, there's been a huge buzz around the, cool. uh, the Will Wheaton episode. So, so this can yeah. be combined with the first yes. one? Yeah, it can be okay. combined with Or you can play it standalone. Play by itself. Yep. And this is coming out when? This is also here this summer uh, in the next uh, few months. So and I think, I think said, we're actually looking May as well for this one right now. And you so. said about $30 also yeah, for that. $30, yep. Very cool. All right. And then over here, a little something next that's... Uh, a little, little tiny little guy. Huh. Uh, for fans of our DC deck building line, uh, we have some new little expansion packs we're releasing that are called crossover packs. These are little $10 SRP packs, which are kind of themed around... Uh, ideas in the DC universe that maybe aren't quite robust enough for us to justify a whole $40 standalone you know, deck building game, right. but uh, something that we can add to and supplement the existing game. So with cool. these little guys, they have little themes of their own. So this first, which comes out next week on March 25th, uh, is the Justice Society of America, which for those who are not familiar is uh, kind of the old school original line of heroes before the Justice League with Batman and Superman and all the iconic hmm. DC characters. So uh, the JSA pack here, what it comes with is a pack of new playable superheroes, so the oversized character cards with their own unique powers. Uh, the super villains that you fight against are all themed with the same stuff, and then a handful of new main deck cards with equipment, superpowers, and some other hero and villain cards as well uh, to kind of splash in there and make the game a little more unique to the Justice Society. Interesting. So uh, you could just replace all the baddies with these and then mix in the new cards and play against just them, or just mix mm -hmm. it all in however you want to? Right, yeah, there's not enough to make this play by itself, of, of course, course, you know, but, uh, but what you do is, yeah, you can take any of the standalone games. You can take the original game, or you can take Forever Evil that just released, or any of the DC games, and you can just simply swap out the playable heroes, swap out the villains, and just with all those kind of, all the attacks that the villains have, and all the unique powers that the heroes have that really kind of dictate how you want to build your deck over the course of the game, 
those changes enough are, are enough right there to really kind of change the strategy of how you want to play the game. Even, even if the main majority of the game stays the same, the, the playable cards uh, with the heroes and the villains you're fighting against really change up the strategy. Quite yeah, that's neat. That's neat. Yeah. You guys uh, already have a, a, a two here, a crossover pack two that you're thinking about doing? or uh, is that We have actually just announced three and four as well, all coming in 2015. Wow. Uh, okay. Crossover pack two is going to be based on Arrow, the TV show. Okay. So we're super cool. excited for that because it's actually a crossover from other mediums into the deck building game and uh, opens the doors for some potential other opportunities for us as well, which we're super thrilled about. Mm -hmm. um, that'll have its own unique themes as far as kind of some obfuscated information and hidden cards and so forth, which is cool. Uh, the third one, which will be later this year, I think Q3 we're looking at, is the just excuse me, the Legion of Superheroes, which again, for those not as familiar with the DC Universe, is a uh, character set in the future okay. in the DC Universe, like the 31st okay. century, I believe it is. Hmm. Um, and so there's a new time travel mechanic on the cards that allows you to play cards out of the lineup, even if they're you know they're not in your hand, you play them out of the lineup by discarding the card, and uh, really changes the strategy each turn cool. with cool. the time travel cards. And the fourth and final one that we've announced so far, which is coming in Q4, is the big one we just announced for the first time in our presentation just a little bit ago was the Watchmen uh, crossover pack as well. And uh, as a lot of people know, Watchmen is a very beloved DC franchise. Um, the original graphic novel is something where uh, we, we really wanted to bring it into the game and wanted to find a unique way to do it. And in the graphic novel, there's not really super villains that you're fighting against. Right. So what we're doing is kind of marrying our crisis expansions, which are our cooperative expansions for DC Comics deck building game, mm -hmm. into a crossover pack where it's you're kind of working together, but in the Watchmen graphic novel, there's a traitor in the mix. There's a character who turns on everybody. Spoiler alert, I guess. Um, uh, you should know that <laughs> by now. It's, it's go, been around go, for a little while. Think, yeah, we're good. But Okay, cool. Um, so you're saying pack anyway, number yeah. four, pack four ties into the crisis packs you put out, it which, are, which turn the game into a co-op game. Is kind it? of, yeah. Mechanically, it's similar. It's, not, it's still a, a crossover pack. Exclusively, it's not specifically a crisis pack, but mechanically, it has a kind of uh, cooperative element, and you're on kind of a time uh, that you have to overcome whoever the bad guy is before they've revealed themselves and, and enacted their plot, basically. Mm, pretty cool. Um, yeah, these yeah. sound excellent. Very cool. Uh, anything else you got coming up that you can tell us about? Yeah, a couple other great things we're yeah. excited about. Um, for one, the Portal Uncooperative Cake Acquisition board game um, it is still in the works. We did announce it a while back, and we've had a lot of people asking us about it, if it's still coming, if it's, you know, okay. what the, the process is, or the status is on that. And uh, the process has been a, co a collaboration with Valve, who right. owns the Portal franchise. Right. Of course, um, and they've been working really closely with us, and uh, we've been making sure that all the components are of absolute top quality before we want to really put it into full production. Right. And uh, there's been a lot of produced stuff, and they're not good enough. Go back and do it again and again, and it's time-consuming, unfortunately. So it's made this come out a lot later than we wanted, but it is coming out this summer is what our plan is now. So we're looking, I think, at July right now is the plan, uh, July or August for, for Portal. Um, it's going to have little uh, test subject figures and cake pieces, which... This is not a lie, I swear. Really, it's I, feel, no, yeah. I feel bad making the cake. That joke, that joke, joke is a, yeah, yeah. You have Sorry. to, right? You have to. It's okay, I get it. I'm obligated. Anyway, yeah, some uh, little turrets and, you know, companion cube pieces, a lot of awesome little game pieces. Uh, so that's coming. And then, of course, our uh, big thing that just wrapped up this last week was the Ghostbusters Kickstarter that we ran for the Ghostbusters yeah. Miniatures board game. Um, it was a wildly successful Kickstarter campaign. We're really proud of that. Uh, it was, uh, I believe, the eighth most popular uh, to date tabletop board game on Kickstarter. So it was awesome. Um, it's uh, going to be an $80 SRP when it comes out, and it's going to have over 40 uh, miniatures in the game with you playing as the Ghostbusters cooperatively to, of course, capture ghosts and traps and seal gates to the spirit world, and there's a variety of scenarios and different versions of the ghosts you can fight against, and uh, modular boards so you can customize how it's going to play out each round, of course, and uh, wow. yeah, we're super wow. excited for that as well. Yeah, this is so much, I mean, this is information overload. You guys have a, an amazing <laughs> year ahead of you, it sounds yeah. like. Great. Thank you, Ryan, for yeah. Joining us. Appreciate it. Excellent. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you soon.